In part one, we learned that the key to success with the do-more is understanding that configuration works best when you do it in a top-down order and that the do-more is device-centric. In part two, we practiced configuring several different types of devices and saw several examples of how the top-down configuration works. In this video, we'll see how using the do-more devices can make you much more productive. Let's start with the barcode scan on a serial port. Because the serial port device takes care of all the details, all you have to do is use the serial port stream in instruction. Select the internal serial port device that we configured, specify how each string is terminated, and pick a place to put the result. This instruction needs to be triggered, so we'll add a contact to do that. Let's open a data view and add the contact, the serial input, and the serial port in queue counter that tells us how many characters the serial port device has ready for us. Download to the do more run the program, and sure enough, if I scan a 10 character barcode, I see 10 characters appear in the queue. And if we trigger the stream in instruction by toggling this control bit, we receive those 10 characters. If I scan several 10 character barcodes, we see the in queue increment accordingly, and each time we toggle the C1 bit, we pull another 10 characters out of the buffer. The point here is the internal serial port device is doing all the work for us, isn't it? It collects the serial data, puts it in a buffer, increments the character count in the buffer, handles any necessary handshaking, etc. We just access that device through its structure, which is do more creative for us, using this dot notation. And all we did was in system configuration, pick which flavor serial port we wanted to use, and then issued a stream in command. And did you notice that no other devices showed up in the stream in command? Only devices that support the stream in command show up in the list. So you couldn't choose an inappropriate device if you wanted to. And the best part about using this device centric model is if you switch devices, your ladder code doesn't change. For example, suppose we wanted to switch this instruction to an external serial port. Once the device was set up for that new external serial port, it would appear in this list. We would just select that and we're done. We don't have to worry about any memory conflicts, buffer overflows, etc. The serial port device takes care of everything for us and the structure of our ladder code doesn't change because all serial ports, internal or external, have the exact same structures. For example, over here in the data view, we would just change this to new serial port dot in queue. There's a step by step example of switching serial ports in this barcode scanning video, so check that out if you want to learn more about using internal and external serial ports on the do more. How about the variable frequency drive? Does it work the same way? Sure, in the GS register write command, for example, you would just pick which GS drive you want to talk to. The do more takes care of all the memory mapping, the handshaking, all that stuff. You don't have to do anything because the device handles all of that for you. And that's the beauty of this device centric model. All devices work the same way. Let's do the same thing with the counter I.O. module. To use the encoder, we bring up the device structure dot whichever member we want to use. In this case, we want this IREG1 register where the counter result is stored. Again, the device keeps track of all this stuff for us. We just use it by accessing the structure members using this dot notation. Let's create a second encoder device on our counter I.O. module. System configuration. Nothing to do on the CPU. We still see our counter I.O. module in the I.O. configuration. Module configuration. Select the counter I.O. module. Edit. Configure. We want to set up channel 2 as a quad counter. Let's name this device encoder 2. Done. We just fully configured a second encoder on our counter I.O. module. Under device configuration, we see our new encoder device and there's nothing to do here. I.O. mappings, we're not using any of the counter I.O. modules I.O. bits so there's nothing to do here. And memory configuration, scroll to the bottom and we see our new encoder 2 structure. Hit OK. So to switch our ladder code to use the second encoder instead of the first one, we just change the structure name which is always the same as the device name except it has a dollar sign in front of it and we're done. That's all it takes because the encoder devices all have the same structure, the same interface, the same usage, etc. And if you wanted to do that globally, well, just use search and replace. This device centric model just makes things so easy. And keep in mind that while we switched encoders on the same counter I.O. module in this example, we could have switched it to any encoder in any base in the entire system. It wouldn't make any difference. We would still just change the name of the device in the ladder instruction. 
the encoder device takes care of everything else. Very cool. And there's one more side effect of using this device centric model. What would happen on most PLCs if you actually removed the module from the local base and put it in a remote base? Yeah, it would break all your code and you would have an enormous amount of work to do to get it back up and running, right? Let's see what happens when you do that on the Do More. Let's power down the Do More and move this counter IO module from this local base to a remote base on the same network. Power up the system. The Do More immediately sees that that counter IO module is missing and gives us an error. So we go to the system configuration and just like always, we start at the top and work our way down. There's no change to the CPU. We did change the IO configuration. We removed an entire local module from the local base, right? To add the remote slave, we go to our Ethan IO master because he manages all our slaves. And before we do anything, we need to hit this button to make sure all the IP addresses are OK. Looks like our slave's IP address is good, but if it wasn't, we would just change it here. Now that we know that all the slaves we want to talk to are on our network, we hit this button to add them to the configuration list. This is all the slaves that DoMore can find on the network. We want to add this one to our configuration, so we select it and hit Add Selected. And when we do that, we now see the counter I.O. module in the remote slave here at the top level and here under the Ethernet I.O. master. We're using a six slot base on the slave, so let's go ahead and modify that. Perfect. Go down to the next step, Module Configuration. You see the new counter I.O. module and the old disconnected one. We could delete the old counter I.O. module and then reset up the new one with the exact same configuration and hope we specify all the encoders correctly and name everything correctly, etc. Or we could do it the easy way. Here's the trick. This Assign Config button lets us take this guy's module configuration and simply transfer it over to this guy. We just highlight the one with the configuration, hit the button, and select the module you want to transfer it to. We only have this one module listed here but in a more complicated system, there could be dozens to choose from. Down here, we can choose to keep this module's configuration or just overwrite it. We don't need to keep the configuration, so we'll overwrite it. If we did keep the configuration, it would appear back here as a disconnected module like this one. Do More Designer asks us, are we sure we want to do this? We are. And just like that, the entire module configuration is transferred to the new module. We don't have to do anything. All the same devices are exactly where they were before. All the mappings are the same, all the memory structures are the same, which means my ladder code is oblivious. That's incredible. That means we have no changes to our ladder code anywhere in the entire project. Why? Because the ladder code still references the same device and the same structure. If we write this out to the PLC, the error goes away. Put the PLC in run mode and look. Even the data view gives us the exact same result as before. It has no idea that we moved that entire module to a completely different rack. And the reason we could do that is because the do more is device centric. The ladder code talks to devices via the device structure. All we did was tell the do more that device resides in some remote rack now using our system configuration top down ritual and our ladder code never knew the difference. It still thinks it's talking to the same device it was before. The device took care of all the dirty work for us. We would have zero ladder code mods to make, even though we moved an entire module. If you've ever tried to move a module on other PLCs, you know what a monster effort that can be. With the Do More, we just reassigned that module configuration to a new module and we were done. That's the device-centric model making your job easier. That's the Do More Way. If you have any questions, please contact Automation Direct's free, award winning tech support during regular business hours. They'll be happy to help you. And don't forget the forums. There's lots of folks there that love to share their years of experience. Just don't post any questions directed at Automation Direct's support team there. They don't monitor the forums on a regular basis.